Rick Welch, welcome to The Jump. Congratulations on such a remarkable career. How, when do you know it's time to step away? Uh, you know, Rachel, sitting here listening to this, it sounded more like an obituary. <laughs> Never. Else, and that sounds very <laughs> frightening. Um, you know, uh, I originally thought about this a year ago, mm -hmm. and it would have been a really bad idea because we were a mess a year ago. Uh, our country was a mess. Our sport was a mess. We didn't know the way forward. Uh, Today, sitting here with the organization we have in place, uh, with Chase Center ready to rock and roll. Today, we announced we're going to be welcoming fans back uh, to Warriors games live at Chase Center on April 23rd for the balance of the season. Uh, there's, the light at the end of the tunnel is a brilliant future, and it, and it just feels like the right time for me. Well, I mentioned some of the aspects of the league that you had a hand in shaping, things that have become tent poles of what we think about when we think about pro basketball, the All-Star Game, the Dream Team, the W. What are you going to look back on and be the most proud of? That's a hard one. I, I, I think in terms of its long-lasting effect, I think All-Star, uh, which was born out of a young executive trying to figure <laughs> out how to keep his job. Uh, it worked, Rick. It worked. Well, it worked. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, I, I, I think that has to be great, but, but I think the pride in launching the W along with Val Ackerman and David Stern and Gary Stevenson, I, I, that, that's the gift that keeps on giving here in the 25th anniversary and one that I continue to be super bullish on uh, in the future as well. Absolutely influence so many. And when you came out in 2011, it was such a big moment for so many around professional sports. It gave so many others the courage, the confidence to make similar declarations in their own workplaces, get to just be who they are. How often does someone talk to you about the impact you had in that area? You know, I didn't quite know what I was signing up for, but I, I, it's been so gratifying. Uh, there isn't a week that goes by that someone doesn't reach out to me from somewhere in the sports world, teams or, or, or leagues or colleges, and, you know, just trying to connect with somebody who they feel can understand the situation they're in and, and can, can be a sympathetic ear to talk it through with them. And I, I, that's a great honor and a great privilege and, and uh, really a terrific part of the outcome of that 2011 announcement. Rick, first of all, congrats on a hell of a run. I know how proud you are of your time specific to the Warriors. Out of that run and seeing that team play the way it did, what are you going to remember most about that group? You know, uh, for me, this one's easy. It's Clay Thompson's 37-point quarter against Sacramento. We will never in our lifetime see that again, and I got to witness it live. Pretty great. Rick, uh, 46 years, Rick, you're not that old. Come on, I gotta check that. I gotta check that number. Uh, well, you gotta remember, I started I remember at 16. Uh, you proudly, <laughs> I know. I remember you proudly uh, giving some of us a tour of the Chase Center when it was near completion. And I know you've done a lot of things and been involved in a lot of projects, but uh, you really, short of uh, digging the hole yourself, really got that project together. It's gonna be a, less, a lasting pro uh, thing for the city of San Francisco. Where does this, you know, rank in the things that you accomplished and, and what kind of accomplishment was it to get that off the ground and, and create that structure? Well, uh, you have to have fearless ownership. So there were a million times along the path, Joe Lacob and Peter Goober said, we're crazy to try to get this done. We got it done 100% privately financed in probably the most difficult political environment in the country uh, in San Francisco. And so in terms of degree of difficulty, uh, it, it tops the charts. In terms of pride, uh, it does as well. Because you guys know better than anybody, these things are not about places to play basketball games. They're about places that create lifetime memories for people. Uh, that's what they have been for me. So it's, uh, it, it's a great legacy for, the, for decades to come in San Francisco. You said my two favorite words, Rick, when it comes to arenas, privately finance, ownership there, the organization taking responsibility itself instead of taking away resources from the public. I'm still impressed with that. I'm going to talk about it every time. Rick, you and Bill Russell also had an incredible friendship over the years. It started when you were both with the Supersonics. Bill would call you, quote, the white boy down the hall because you sat, well, down the hall from his office. And Rick, Mr. Russell has something to say to you. Oh, no. Congratulations, Rick, on an incredible career in the NBA. I'll never forget the early days in Seattle. 
and the bonds we formed over the years. The white boy down the hall turned out to be one of the greatest executives in the history of professional sports. Thank you for all you've done for the NBA and the WNBA. Welcome to retirement. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> That's pretty uh, cool, right? Rick, what is uh, your friendship with Bill meant to you over the course of your career? Just uh, what a gift. Like, there was no reason for him to open up to me and, and uh, invite me in as a friend in, in my 20s. Uh, a friendship that lasts through today. Uh, called to wish him happy birthday on his, on his birthday not so long ago. So uh, that was awesome. Thank you guys for doing that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.